the Full Circle Podcast, compelling interviews and incredible tales from Colorado's Western Slope, from the mountains to the desert. Christy Reese and her team hear from the movers, shakers, and characters of the Grand Valley and surrounding mountain towns that make the Western Slope the place we all love. You'll learn, you'll laugh, you'll love with the Full Circle. Hi, everybody. Christy Reese here with the Full Circle Podcast, and I'm really excited today to have Jeff Snook and Jody Corey, the owners of the Spoken Vine Motel in Palisade, Colorado, and the brand new owners of Palisade Cafe also. Congratulations. So um, one of the reasons we really wanted to interview you is that you have just jumped right into the Palisade business scene and really all over the Grand Valley. And we also love your social media so much. It's really fun to watch. So uh, we have a lot to talk about, but let's start with how did you end up buying the motel? What was your first introduction to Grand Junction? And yeah, how, how'd you get here? Um, so Jeff and I have lived in Steamboat for almost 20 years and we have been coming down to this area for almost that entire time to come mountain biking and play in the desert. We love the area, Um, but we didn't really know much about Palisade. We would drive through and every now and again, we would stop for a Bloody Mary, but that's really all we knew about Palisade. And fast forward, I went on a girl's trip. It was a friend's birthday and she wanted to go to Palisade where we would road bike at the Colorado National Monument and then come back and go wine tasting. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. Let's let's plan this vacation. So she looks around, there's nowhere to stay. And she finds this place called the Mesa View Motel. Mm-hmm. And she she books it. There's no website on, on online. Uh, we took a chance. And so we showed up and it wasn't as good as we had hoped. Uh-huh. So needless to say, after, after that, uh, after checking out, we early, were, early. We checked out, we, we early. checked out early. Yeah. We were, Don't forget that part. It's important. <laughs> we, were, we were a little nervous <laughs> about the surroundings. Um, so we checked out early, but we continued on the girl's trip and we're sitting around and I said, you know, Palisade is super cool. We should buy the Mesa View Motel. Was it for sale at the time? It was not for sale at the time. So I... And, and to be clear, you were sitting around with your girlfriends. Totally. At this time. Drinking wine. Drinking wine. Yes. Right. Which always makes you think you want to run a lodge or a hotel. Yeah, or, yeah. for sure. I wasn't in a new the business loop, venture. we were married. <laughs> Just to be clear. Okay. Please. So... Uh, <laughs> So I texted a girlfriend who lived in Palisade and I said, what do you know? And she said, nothing. So a few months later, she texted me and she said, it's for sale. So we were in the thick of our winter. I was in, I owned a property management company at the time. uh, In Steamboat Springs. In Steamboat Springs. It was called Simply Steamboat. And we managed 150 condos and townhomes for other, other people. And I managed a bunch of HOAs. So you were kind of busy. Kind of busy, kind of busy. So this was, you know, this was just playing on me ever so slightly through the winter. So we came down to Palisade again in May for a great bike race. It was called the Grand Fondo. Unfortunately, it's, they're not doing it anymore, but we had a beautiful time. We stayed at Base Camp Resort. There was about 12 of us and we had like the best weekend in Palisade. Mm-hmm. And before we pulled out of town, I said, Jeff, do, let's, let's just go drive by the, the motel. Let me see what you think. still hadn't seen yet. Yeah, he still hadn't seen it. Um, so we drive by and he said, what are you talking about? The place is a dump. <laughs> so, just a little different language. Different but, language. Probably yeah, a different language. I was a little more, uh, yeah. forward. So on the three. <laughs> so I was like, uh, so basically what I said was like, you have three hours to convince me, but within an hour we had booked a, a stay at wine country in the following weekend and brought our uh, cruiser bikes down and spent another weekend in Palisade. And so Jody, what did you say on that three hour ride home? I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, I'm a great saleswoman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, owning a lodge is not easy. So it's not easy. You weren't under any um, fantasies that this, like, no. Jeff, this well, is going to just be fun, fun, fun all the time. Totally. We knew what we were getting into. Jeff also has a property management background. Um, so we know how, we know the um, the idea of setting rates and caring for a property and dealing with guests. Yeah. Um so, so that was that was certainly okay. in the wheelhouse. So that this would re- require moving down from Steamboat, um, a big capital outlay of, of funds. And Jeff and I don't come from money, so this was you know a big deal for us to take this leap. But I've been watching the motel trend go on for a f- 
quite a few years. Yeah, it's and been going on. You've been talking about it for a while. Yeah, and I have an interior design background, and I just always thought that that would be fun to design something from the ground up because the property management company that I had in Steamboat, I bought. So it came with the logo. It came with the branding. Mm -hmm. And the condos and the townhomes weren't my own to decorate and design with the full idea that it is for the traveler. Mm -hmm. So this, I, it, it was just so exciting to be able to do that start to finish. And, um, and, and right there is how she sold me in that first hour. Mm -hmm. That got me excited. I was yeah. like, yeah, because mm -hmm. I had always worked for other people and, and worked my tail off for someone else to be successful. Right. And she sold the idea of, of that to me. And I'm like, yeah, we can do fun. this. And you can was ride your bike year round. Yeah. So if you're not running say, a motel. You're not you're running a <laughs> <laughs> and a restaurant now. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, so free time has gone, you know, away. Was your initial goal to live here year round when you thought about the motel? Because you kind of were back and forth a little bit yeah, for a while. So we, I was back and forth for a while, really for the financial. I, I, I had a great job in Steamboat. Um, so Jeff came down and he was, because the motel was major, major construction. And there were months where he didn't have water or, or, or heat. plumbing or heat. Yeah. So he in the was, middle of the winter. He uh -huh. was living in the camper in the driveway. The <laughs> so for essentially, even after we opened, I was running back and forth from Steamboat and coming down on the weekends and help. And, you know, and I can you know, do a decent part of it remotely, mm -hmm. even during the construction and then subsequently after we opened. So when COVID hit, I've been down here full time yeah. and it's, it's been just so great to, yeah. to, to be with my husband. And yeah. in Palisade, Palisade is, is great at first, you know, and, and I still think Steamboat is an amazing community, but Palisade really has, has stepped it up and we're, we're enjoying it. We have some great friends. Yeah. It's a really it's special place. Cool. And I think it you're is. not alone. I, you know, I grew up in the mountains of Southwest Colorado and would go to Salt Lake City or Moab and drive through Grand Junction. And I never really got off Highway 50 or 70. Right. And until you do in this community, you don't realize the beauty. And once you do, you're like, there's so much here. So much. It's incredible. So, um, Wine Country Inn is a beautiful place, but there's not a whole lot of lodging in Palisade. No, so that had to weigh into your decision-making process. Yeah, like there's a real opportunity here. Yeah, when we came back down in that, um, that following weekend from being sold uh, on the property, um, that's exactly what we did. We tooled around town on our bikes and we went to the restaurants and we talked to people and did a lot, whatever research we could find uh, on lodging. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was, that was it. And we realized that uh, they have a cap on their VRBOs. So that was yep. kind of helpful. Um, so very limited lodging. And it was kind of like, all right, I think this is a really good opportunity. Yeah. Once we were down there and we saw it live, it was, we realized it. And we really believe that Palisade is getting to be, if they're not already, you know, on the, on the tourist map. And yeah. that weekend we came down to, to do our due diligence. We went to a bunch of wineries. And there was a, a ton of young people. It just seemed vibrant. They were dressed so, you know, just yeah. out for a day wine tasting. And we were like, where are they staying? Yeah. So, you know, what, you know. If the country ends full. Right. And we just were like, let's, that seems like the demographic that is going to be the new crop of wine tasters. Mm -hmm. So it, we, yeah, we basically appeal to a demographic that I don't think necessarily had had a great place. And the and the Spoken Vine has a great location downtown, so you can walk everybody mm -hmm. everywhere. So as soon as you arrive at the Spoken Vine and in Palisade, you don't even have to drive again until you leave, right. which right. is fantastic. That's a yeah. So the the. The motel itself was still not for sale when you made this decision, correct? So it did was. you? It oh, was sorry. by that it time. Was. Okay, oh, yes. and that's what again pushed us okay. in that direction. And when we came down, we set up a, a showing. At that at that point, it was with a, a realtor. So um, Jody reached out to uh, I don't remember her name, but uh, reached out to her, and we had a showing. I walked the property with. That's good. The I'm glad owners. you did. You know, so yeah. it wasn't one of us. So no, it wasn't one of you. Don't name any. No. <laughs> um, so we walked the property with the realtor and the owners who had had it for 30 years. So mm -hmm. you know they were very proud, as they should have been. Um, so yeah, that was when it was like, okay, we're now we're in. Yeah, and it took it. It took us about four months. Four months um, getting financing. 
I came back down probably the twice a month. things like yeah, that. Yeah, twice a month to do inspections, meet with the owners again, and just understand the property. So I was mm-hmm. taking little day trips back and forth. And you did most of the remodel work yourself? I was there. <laughs> <laughs> that counts, right? You, you did yeah, a I, lot. I, I mean, I did a, a lot did a more lot. than I ever thought I would without a construction background. Mm-hmm. I had painted, I had a painting business a long time ago, so I'm a handy guy. Yeah. But it, when it comes to like that involvement of like uh, the, the construction labor, part of it, yeah. yeah, the actual labor of it and, and the construction part, it was new to me. Mm-hmm. So I was in a world I had never really fully been in. Yeah. Completely. I would say Jeff did. We certainly had an electrician and a plumber. Yeah. Um, Jeff did the majority of the work himself to a point. And then we started getting behind on the schedule. So then we, we found some really great local crews that, that helped us hit our six month uh, mm-hmm. timeline, yeah. which was, which was perfect. And yeah. I, mean, I had the construction background. I've done project management before. So I would keep track of, um, all of the ordering, where where we were in the timelines, the critical path, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then manage the branding and the interior design uh, finishes. From so it was, a, it was it was a lot more than interior design. Yeah. You didn't just put some lipstick on there. Right. You did a lot of work. A lot right. of yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, we mm-hmm. essentially our plan was to we knew we were going to have to do new electrical and plumbing right off the bat. And we were going to have to rip up you know at least two feet of the floor from the exterior wall in yeah. to get to that plumbing. It ended up being a lot more. Uh-huh. <laughs> Probably about 75% of every room was down to the floor joists. Wow. Ceiling. And, it's, it's, and on the stats. inside, it, 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 it's essentially a brand new building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. How many rooms do you have? 17. Uh, it was 18 when we bought it, but we took one room and turned it into a suite. So it has uh, one of the rooms. It was so small. I'm like, we walked in we're like, how's anybody even walk in I here? And I was like, we can't rent a room There's with a no twin way. bed. I don't even think you can fit a twin bed in there. It was so small. Yeah. So, and yeah, 17 rooms. And we turned one of them into a suite. Um, it was a really cool room. And Cute then, variety. Yeah, a good variety. And then um, a variety of double queens, twin, uh, excuse me, double queens, single queens, and kings. And then mm-hmm. we have one apartment, like full-on apartment, which mm-hmm. is, that's the... That's the sweet spot. Great. Yeah, it's a cool one. So what? Wh- when did you actually open for business and relaunch? April 1st of 19. Uh, excuse me, May 1st of 19. Yeah. Of 19. Yeah. So we bought it. We bought the motel, closed on the motel on Halloween of 18, which was super weird. Um, and then reopened that uh, May 1st of 19. And love your social media. I mean, <laughs> you're a natural born performer. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here for Please. at least another 35 minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. If you'd like to do any dancing or, you know, anything oh, like that. Oh, stretch. A little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you watching or listening, if you haven't checked out Spoken Vine's social media, please do. It's, it's very entertaining. So thanks for bringing a little levity to the valley. Thank you. Um, I've gotten a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you had some time to um, build your business before COVID hit. And I, I know the response right off the bat was great. Did you start filling up right away? Were people... We, I would say the first year was, was good. It was... Yeah. It was... Better than we thought it, it was, was going to be. It was better. When we first started building, one of the locals said, oh, oh you're going to do great. You'll be busy all the festival weekends. And we said... I hope we're busier more than just more than that. Yeah. Weekend. It was like literally three weekends. We're like, what? No, no, we need more of that. Um, but the first year was, the first year was good. We were, we're excited about it. We did well. And then we met some really cool people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we started for the second year and we had a bunch of weddings on the books for that yeah. second year. It was starting off strong. March was better than we had thought. And then COVID hit and we just started cancelate that those first three days, just Jeff, Took out, took the phone calls for all the cancellations, and he he was crushed. He, yeah, he was mentally drained. You know, we. I'm sure it had to be really yeah. scary. It was really scary. Yeah, really scary. And um, you know, and then it was like, oh, oh, we, you know, few few weeks of shutdown. Oh wait, we're going to be shut down another month. And actually, I should back we up. Never we, shut- we weren't shut down. We didn't have to shut down. But we could have and should have. Nobody um, was traveling. No one was there. <laughs> right. I get the onesie twosie of somebody like. I think we had about country six, or... maybe six reservations, one night stays in like two months. Yeah. Wow. It was tough. Yeah. Um, so we sat around and we thought when it, when it opens back up, we are going to be so appreciative of all the guests that come back. 
And during COVID, we noticed that a lot of businesses were just slashing services. Oh, we don't do that COVID. Sorry, pre-COVID, we used to take care of you, but you know, that was, mm -hmm. and it was just like this, this thing. And we it, thought, it was an how can we, we do felt like better? it was kind of an excuse. Yeah. yeah. And, and everybody had their own situations. It's not a dig at them. I totally. get it. It's what their choice was. We just didn't want to be that. Right. We wanted to be something different and something that yes. would still put who we were, who we are out there. And one of the big things was, you know, serving breakfast in the lobby. We used to put out like a, a little spread, n nothing, nothing fancy, but just quality stuff. And with COVID, we weren't going to be able to do that. So we pivoted and now we <laughs> do room service. So I think we're probably the only motel in the U.S. that does room service <laughs> on a tray with a silver carafe and People love it. Yeah. You know, but just those, those, we really treat our guests like family. It's, we, we want them to enjoy Palisade just as we've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And we're there to help them along, you know, any, any stage of their trip. And, you know, Jeff has often gone to rescue people who have gone flat tires or got too tipsy at the winery. So we probably shouldn't <laughs> advertise that because then he'll be getting phone calls all the time. Yeah, no, right. don't advertise that. But we're you know, just spoken by and we know those people are going to pick right. us up if we need That's them. right. <laughs> totally. Only if you're staying with us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we clarify that. Maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> Depends how much money you have. So, but yeah, that's, we really just want them to have fun. And it's definitely reflecting in the reviews and, we wanted it to be more than a place to stay. We wanted it to be a community. We wanted the guests to get to know each other. Uh, Monday nights, we we've turned into has turned into this uh, a locals night at the at the Spoken Vine. Tons of locals come. We have a community bike ride that leaves right from the motel. And by the end of the night, everyone's friends. Yeah, and we have a food truck. Lovely. That's great. Yeah, yeah, we have a food truck pretty much every Monday, and now the, mo the Spoken Vine has a we have the motel bar. Yeah, so that's cool. Motel bar. Yeah. Tell more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it goes with COVID, really. I mean, it really, that's what it came down to. So uh, we were going to do our uh, courtyard the spring of COVID, and then COVID hit, and we didn't have any money. So we were like, okay, let's not do that. Um, so we planned it out this winter and um, planned out the courtyard with the fence, a uh, uh, pergola, and all this. It's just a nicer seating area now than what yeah. we had before. Mm -hmm. and, with a little and, shade. And, with a little yeah, shade. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the lobby was no longer a lobby because everything is remote check-in. We have these remote locks that we don't you need send a code. Anymore. Nobody has a key. Mm -hmm. um, so the lobby is basically just sitting there empty. I'm like, we got to do something with this thing. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we're like, okay, let's get a liquor license. Let's see if we can get a liquor license. So I went through the process of getting a liquor license and mm -hmm. we we're going to just do it in the entry entryway to the lobby and have, you know, a couple of beers on tap, some wine and, you know, some small bar stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so then we ended up moving out of the motel. Yeah, we, 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 we lived at the motel. Yeah, um, up which until is this cool, last but, January. But very strange at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so everyone's like, oh my God, I work so much. I'm like, no. No, you don't. We do. We, we live, live at work. work. <laughs> Literally live, live at work. work. Never leave. <laughs> so we bought a place in January. So we were now living off site. So when we were designing what the lobby was going to look like with the bar, all of a sudden we the lobby no, we got, no space. was eaten up by this bar. Because then if you're going to do it, let's do it right. Yeah. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we, since we're not living there, we busted a, a, we cut a hole, hole in the in the wall that led to our former living room. Again, mm -hmm. we weren't using it, so we thought let's dedicate this to the bar. So now it's a gr it's a great space. It's yeah. open every night. Um, it's from five to five to eight, and it's just an amenity for the guests. It's open to the public, but you know it's it's you know super casual place. Yeah, it's after, pretty cool. After getting out of your car after a long road trip, so the, want to mon the Monday night bike rides, everybody then. Hits the bar it's and the hangs bar. out under yeah, the pergola. And, yeah. yeah, and has Fantastic. the food truck. And we yeah. have food trucks on Thursday and Fridays yeah. and Mondays right Wonderful. now. So it's pretty cool. Like pretty it's cool. a it's a fun little thing they got going on yeah. there, you know. So and, So when did you start to feel the recovery in the hospitality industry for you? And and was it different for you than other places because of the type of motel and the, the innovative things that you were doing. I mean, what a year it was for. What a year. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, the, it was the hotels and the lodging properties in the large cities took a nosedive mm -hmm. um, and our hearts go out to, you know, what they're still even dealing with now. But in the, in the, the style of property we have, 
people felt safe. They went right from their car into their room. They had an individual heating and cooling unit. It was, you know, they have keypads, mm -hmm. no shared spaces. So people felt safe. So I would say that we picked up in June-ish. Yeah, June -ish. we, we started was, to feel the positive effects really, in June. Then it was really busy. <laughs> it was really, <laughs> it was really busy. <laughs> That's an understatement. And so, it was really busy also because we were understaffed. We, we, we didn't you were know doing if everything. We, were, we didn't want to hire because right. you're going to be shut down next week. You're going to be yeah, shut we down know. next week. We're like, oh my God. So we're, we're literally cleaning rooms. Yeah, yeah. It was, and it just kept coming. Like We're like, oh, it'll, it'll slow down after September. October was crazy busy. <laughs> it was. Um, and this year it has been insane. insane. Yeah. Um, in a, in a great in a way. Good way. We love right? it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, we love it. And I know we you track it. everything. So where are most of your hotel guests coming from? Denver. Denver. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Coming most down to just do the same thing like you did, yeah. which is ride bikes and wine taste yeah. and just enjoy small town yeah, life. Definitely. Yeah. And I know you coming from um, a ski town and I came from the mountains as well. You know, there. Uh, Grand Junction 20 years ago wasn't a place that you would consider moving to. It just wasn't, didn't have that cool factor right. anywhere here in the Valley. Because I remember doing a, um, a branding session with uh, GJEP and, and uh, some of the other folks. And the word that we kept talking about, what's it like to live in Colorado? It's sexy. Like when you go travel other places, you're like, I'm from Colorado. It's a cool right. place. And I just don't think Grand Junction or Palisade or Fruita had that sexy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we do now. Yeah. And I think people from other parts of Colorado are like, I think I could live there. Definitely. It gives me goosebumps. Like, I it's do. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so sick. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. definitely yeah. agree. Yeah. We have had a bunch of our guests that came to stay and they have subsequently moved on to buy a property down yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of our friends and, now. And a, and a couple of come our friends. Down, came down so, to the valley. I think it, the allure is the mild climate. Yes, it's hot in the summer, but the evenings are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. in the mornings. In the mornings yeah. are beautiful. Oh, they're fantastic. Um, and the price point, I think it's still it's reasonable still going compared. Up. It's still reasonable yeah. compared to definitely the mountain towns yeah, and right. even Denver. Yep. And that small town living, I think, is is very attractive. And there's opportunities. There's definitely jobs to be had down mm -hmm. here on the on the western slope. Yeah. Yeah. So fast forward, you've gone through this crazy period of time with your brand new business <laughs> through COVID <laughs> and things are picking up and oh lo and behold, there's a restaurant for sale in Palisade. <laughs> <laughs> this one was my idea. <laughs> it was, it was, it was. Of course it was. <laughs> I was just getting her back. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> so how did that happen? How did well, you fall into that? It, it was a Monday night, so locals night, essentially. You know, uh, at the, yeah, at, right, at the, at at the, the spoken vine. I wanted to say cafe. So a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of people come in, and everyone, you know, starts talking, and uh, somebody came in and said. The Palisade is for sale. The cafe. The John uh, Sabal and uh, Marty, his wife, they they're gonna they're gonna sell it, uh, and if they don't sell it by the end of the month, it's probably gonna close. And this was and it was by the end of May. This mm -hmm. was the end of May. Maybe the, the, well, the last day of May. Well, I probably could know the day. No, but no, no. The sorry, we found out about it in the beginning of May. At, at the beginning of May. Sorry. So literally, the, but if it wasn't sold purchased by, by June May. one, June yeah. one, it was effectively done. done. So, and everything. so for us, we eat out a lot um, and we enjoy a little variety in our life, as you do. <laughs> and our guests also, Palisade gets busy. And yeah. sometimes it's tough to get in a place because they're, they're booked or, you know, there's a line out the door, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we... we we looked at us, each other and we said, In we quiet. can't we both let looked, this place close. Yeah, we both looked at each other close. like, talk inside. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's Not in front of everyone. In our background, I used to wait tables and manage uh, a few restaurants in Steamboat. And Jeff, right before we bought the motel, he he was in restaurants. He was a GM of a great restaurant in Steamboat called Salt and Lime. And then he also worked uh, in uh, the restaurant business in the ski area right before that. So it's still very fresh in our minds, you know, what it entails. And again, we knew what we were getting into. This is not a totally on but, left field. Uh, if you know what you're getting into, the restaurant is a ton of work. Yeah. Then we should have known for right. sure. Yes. Yeah, so no, it was fresh enough so. out of our brain, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and 
I think that's the difference with Jeff and I. We are we are definitely not afraid of hard work. Mm -hmm. We we like to see projects where we can have an impact. I really don't know if we we would ever buy a successful, you know, like a business where we would change nothing. That that's just not that's not how we are. We we like to put our stamp on it mm -hmm. and, and put our spin on um, whether it's service or, or the product itself. You know that that's. Yeah. So anybody that's been to Palisade Cafe can attest to great food, really nice little small town atmosphere. Yeah. What is the stamp you're going to put on it? What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. I don't for, know. For us, it's 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 service and consistency. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, I think our main goal was was keeping it open for the at least for the busy season because mm -hmm. if we had another if we had a closed restaurant even in Palisade anywhere it would you know the options are not there. Yeah. You know, we have a, a couple other really good ones, yeah. but it's just not everybody just wants to go to, to the same yeah. place every day. And so. we, and we got a chance to meet with the staff ahead of, ahead of the closing Yeah, and they're great. And we wanted to make sure that we kept them. We mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that there was some continuity in their lives and you know, they have, they have a paycheck and they know what's going to happen at the end of the month. And so, so we met with them and, and, they're awesome. So we're yeah. right now we're focusing on upping the service level. Jeff and I are, you know, again, that's what we're about. We really mm -hmm. care about the customer and the experience mm -hmm. and then everything else. It's just, we're making minor tweaks, but basically mostly, mostly the same. And yeah. then our thought is we would probably close this winter and do a little bit of a redesign and, mm -hmm. and see See where See where we end up. Jeff, I mean, you haven't been able to like tear anything apart or put anything back <laughs> know, together in a, a while. Years. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta get back in there. <laughs> yeah, no, I think yeah, we're ready. I mean, I wouldn't, just, you know, it was really was my. I was like, Jody, we can do this. Mm -hmm. She's like, we're busy. I'm like, but we can do this. <laughs> well, I was out there with some friends a couple weeks ago, yeah. and you guys were both in there working, and I have to say, it was a Absolutely fabulous meal. We awesome. had a great time. Loved the wine and the carrot cake. It was, yeah, the it was fantastic. Cake is pretty bad. <laughs> it was really good. Bad. And I got home and I told my kids, like, I just had the best carrot cake. And they were like, why didn't you bring any home? It's like, yeah, good point. Because that's how next good time. it was. <laughs> right. Right. So next time I will. Um, let's see where to turn next. Um, so motel, restaurant, and um and you're also working on a development here in Grand Junction as a project manager, Jody. That's really exciting. What can you share with us about that? It's very exciting. Um, there is a, a an opportunity that I got presented with. I know the developer from Steamboat Springs. I had the pleasure of working with them just a little bit up there. And they are involved in a great project down here called Dos Rios. Dos Rios is a swath of land that has been rehabilitated over it's 10 plus years at least. It is along the river. It is right down the stream from mm -hmm. Chrissy's office right where yeah. we are right yeah. now. And take it's the going, bike path right there. Take the bike yeah. path. Yeah. It is a, it's going to be the place to go in Grand Junction. It is, um, it's going to have condos, townhomes, a commercial area. Think on the on the river, food hall style, brewery. We are going to attract a bunch of retail in the outdoor rec industry. Can't share some of those details, but it's again open to the the public, um, the residents. It is going to be a. They're going to have a boat ramp right. Right outside the yeah. food hall, where you can, where you can. That's cool. Totally. I where you I've can, heard this. you can literally, <laughs> you can literally tube up, raft up, get out, have a beer, have a great meal. Yeah. And, uh, that sounds like a blast. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a blast, and it's, you'll probably hear some more stuff about that this this coming fall when we launch the marketing. Jody, tell us a little bit about the vision for the project that these developers are. Um, bringing in because they've done other projects in other areas and they have a really specific vision for this place. And as we all know, Grand Junction has not taken huge advantage of the riverfront property in the past. And here we are down at the riverfront uh, in the bonsai building and the three of us are out looking at the, the pond and watching people paddleboard and everything. And it's really exciting to think about more things going on along the riverfront. So talk a little bit about their vision. I think a lot of cities had 
more commercial areas around the riverfront. I think that that's indicative of most areas. And now there is a shift of embracing that riverfront. Mm -hmm. And the property down here, Los, Los Colonias, is is beautiful. And I think this is going to be a great opportunity to extend that for for some miles down the road. Mm -hmm. So the vision is really that placemaking where people want to be there. There's a sense, there's a vibrancy about it. Um, there again, there's there's a new crop of uh, people moving to this town. The younger generation of people who have been locals their whole life. I think they're looking for a little bit more to fill their days. Mm -hmm. And what Dos Rios is going to be, it's going to be the hub of activity. There's going to be a conference space. We're really excited. There's going to be a music venue. Live music is, you know, is, is back right now. And yeah. I think we... Thank goodness. Thank yeah. goodness. Right. And Events. this is going to be that opportunity to just have that world-class music venue. And I Really, it's also going to be a place for families to come. We are going to, there's going to be a playground, some splash park elements for the kids. Again, you're going to be able to take out or put in at that part of the river and just really make it a place, a mm -hmm. place for junction. Um, it's right along the bike path. That bike path can take you all the way to Palisade and it all, yeah. and it also can take you all the way to Loma. Isn't that you, amazing? I mean, not too many amazing. communities have totally. that kind of yeah. Yeah. reach. And the, the mountain bike trails in Loma are fantastic, but even, even better, the lunch loops, the lunch loops, yeah. the lunch loops is our, is our local network here in Grand Junction where you can ride for 30 minutes or five hours and put together just a really amazing ride. And it's all right from Dos Rios. Yeah. And I think that there's so much going on down here with, um, you know, the project that's on the old Brady trucking site, just um, east of us here, and then Jen Taylor's project uh, down at Dos Rios. Uh, I think they're all going to complement each other so well, and it's just going to be such a vibrant area for miles. We are. I, Jen Taylor's project um, is, is definitely one of the reasons that we got involved here in Grand Junction. We think this is going to dovetail perfectly with what she's doing. And she shared her lookbook, we shared ours. And it's so, it, it's right on, on par with each other. And yeah. we are both trying to elevate what's going on here. There's gonna be art sprinkled through, not just this is the art section, we are going to have art woven through the property. And Jen is gonna, you're going to feel a heartbeat soon as you walk onto her property as well. How do you feel that the the downtown core and Main Street is going to benefit from the development on the riverfront? Because obviously that's been the, the main hub of activity and um, a lot of businesses there that don't want to see everything go down to the riverfront, but have a balance between the two. This is something that is very exciting. The city is building a pedestrian bridge and it's going to um, go from Dos Rios across the railroad tracks mm -hmm. and dump right next to the old, uh, the train station. Train station. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a multimodal uh, transportation hub. It is, nice. it, again, it's, it is going to be on par with some of the best cities. And so, so really, if you were staying at Dos Rios, you can walk, bike, to downtown mm -hmm. and then vice versa. If you were yeah. from in downtown, you can walk bike back over to Dos Rios. And That's I think cool. that is going to connect that energy yeah. and not be two separate locations. You know what I keep thinking about is a trolley, you know, like from, from here to downtown. Yeah, right. Because we, when we moved down here, we really miss having all the restaurants around and we understand there's some, at least one restaurant coming down this way, right. but you know, it, it, it's, it's not that far to go in the car, but it'd be really nice if there was just a something we could hop on yeah, right. to go get a lunch and come back. So I love the idea of a trolley. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I think definitely pedicabs are going to take off down oh, here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, for sure. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, so you mentioned if you're staying at Dos Rios. So um, Jen will have rental properties too, but the, the you said um, apartments, condos, and townhomes, and those are going to be for rent. Yes, right? they're, gonna, they're gonna be for rent. So when I was asked to be part of this project by the developers, uh, they asked me what I thought of this concept. And I 
think it is a huge need for this area, Grand Junction, Mesa County, to have a property where you can come with your family, your gear, your your friends, and and travel together where you have a garage, there is a kitchen, you can cook your meals, mm -hmm. but you also can be right next to your friends. The other bonus of being at Dos Rios is you'll be able to have all of those other amenities at your fingertips. You can ride from the house to go to the lunch loops, mm -hmm. you can you could run the river on your on your kayak, and then you can also finish off and and walk right down to the brewery and the food hall to yeah. get dinner. Um, it's awesome. it's just an again an easy vacation. When they come, they could almost leave their car and travel with their friends. It's just right here from Dos Rios yeah. because it's so centrally located. Yeah. And what's the timeline like? So the timeline it's a five to ten year project. We are going to be announcing uh, launching the marketing this fall, so keep an eye out for that. And we are hoping to have the first uh, row of townhomes built probably at the beginning of the summer, early spring if the weather Fantastic, wow. that's super exciting. Yeah. yeah. And we I'm expect learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just been busy a yeah, little bit. No, we just, she has her <laughs> making thing. Making carrot cake. Or yeah, <laughs> right, no, I'm definitely not making the carrot cake. <laughs> yeah, so so um, I love that you, you know, in real estate, I talk to my agents a lot about think like a consumer. You know, what does the consumer right. want to see? Right. What, what kind of um, what kind of photos do they want to see of a home uh, when they're looking and they're in Denver or they're in California or Las Vegas? And, and what do they want to see of this area? Um, so you all being fairly new residents here, what are the other gaps that you see? I mean, not, not that I'm going to... Um, hold you to any other business ventures here in town, but are you looking at any other things like, you know what Grand Valley really needs? Yeah, what else? Uh, I'll be honest. No, I'm not looking at that. <laughs> um, I, my world is really small right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it's my reality is focused on the restaurant and the motel right now. So honestly, I, and another reason is I don't want to say anything because then she's going to be like, Ooh, that's a great idea. Let's start another <laughs> business. I need yep. at least two years yep. before yep. we can do that. Okay, we'll just keep a lid on that. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I am. Um, you know, I think for, for Palisade specific, it would be nice to have some more lodging so people could, you know, you know see Palisade for what it is and be able to get in. And um, But I also understand why there isn't, and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I, I always feel bad when I have, when I'm full, you know, when we're full, right. I turn people away. I was like, Oh, I wish you could be here right now. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. Good Palisade. feeling and a bad feeling at the yeah, same time. I want them to experience yeah. it. I don't care where you stay, you know? Yeah. So yeah. for me, that's, I guess my, my thing. Yeah. Um, we definitely, we like to support all businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the wine country in there, it's an amazing property. Yeah. And True. we, we do believe that, if you have a successful business and everyone shares in that success, you know, we'll, we'll all be there. And we try to, we try to recommend local businesses as much yeah. as we, as, as much as possible. As far as a gap in what Junction doesn't have, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it sounds like you're, yeah. We're getting there. You're getting there. We're getting there. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't see any obvious holes. Yeah. I would like more of things. Yeah. yeah. So it's more human restaurants. More of that. More um, of that. that maybe stay open a little later or um, I think I think this area in general used to be a, a sleepier town, so a lot of businesses are only open a few days a week. Mm -hmm. I would like to get to a point where the majority of the businesses are open seven days a week and we're, and we're one of them now. Yeah. So we right now are only open four days a week. And that is, that's mainly because of staffing. Uh -huh. yeah. Staffing is tough. So yeah. there's definitely jobs to be had here <laughs> in yeah. Mesa County. But I think traditionally people didn't think that they were busy on the Sunday, Monday right. nights, but now with tourism being what it is, there are people. Well, here. that night we uh, dined with you. We, um, we rented e-bikes and rode around Palisade and it was raining, if you remember that night, which yeah. was really fun. Oh, it wasn't yeah. raining when we got there, right. but when we left it was, but we had e-bikes and it was really fun. Uh, the light on the book cliffs was amazing. And I was amazed at how many people were downtown milling around and, yeah. and having dinner at the right. restaurants. And it was really busy. And I think that was a Thursday night. Yeah, I think it, I I thought say. it was a Thursday or a Sunday. Yeah. Thursday, yeah. So thank you very much for just 
giving a shot in the arm and the economy and Palisade and, and uh, keeping the restaurant going and the motel as well. Looking forward to the project. Yeah. So uh, beer or wine? Hmm. I mean, no, I what's, your, what's your, what's your, uh, what do you like? You know, do you like to go to the brew pubs or do you like to drink wine? I like cocktails. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so you serve that I, at the bar. I, I, I like to go to the distillery. Distillery. <laughs> distillery. It's another great thing about Palisade, right? But I, yeah. I mean, I love going to the wineries too, but. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? Um, I, you know, I'm not really biased. I'll take them all. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it depends on the, you know, we have a lot of great winers. It depends on, I'm really specific. It depends on who I'm going with. It depends on what their mood is. And, you know, if I was going to go by myself. He's very complex. I'm very complex. (laughs) If I was going to go by myself on a Saturday at noon, I'd probably say a winery. Uh Uh, Tuesday at three, a brewery. (laughs) Good point. Good point. There's well, no rhyme or reason. thank you, Jeff Snook and Jody Corey, for joining well, us you. on the Full Circle Podcast. It's been a pleasure to get to know more about you and your projects. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers? Um, I would say come down and see your office. Yeah, this is pretty honestly, spectacular. this is spectacular. Thank you. The this building is, awesome. is beautiful. The space is beautiful, and the view is yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks for that. Having a great space for it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, cool. And if someone wants to make a reservation at your hotel or at your restaurant. Yeah. So spokenvinemotel.com and it, the word and is spelled out. Um, and then uh, Palisade Cafe and Wine Bar. <laughs> on our website. And specialty cocktails. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't even know. Do that again. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Wait, we have a website? Wait. <laughs> I don't know what it is, honestly. Yeah, you got dated tonight. Oh, is it? Oh, fantastic. I don't want to cut that out, though. I think that's great. Just, yeah, no, I don't have to cut it out. Uh, just Google Palisade Cafe. Sure, it'll pop right up. There's one in Minnesota. Press one for movie phone. <laughs> for somebody that's going to drive from Fruta or Grand Junction, they yeah. probably want to have a reservation. No, uh, not necessarily. Um, a- ask that question. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. So okay. we aren't. Uh, so we we only take reservations at this point for six or more. Okay. Um, Good we, to know. We uh, we felt. Um, a lot of our friends and locals we talked to felt like they weren't able to get in because of so many of the small reservations. So, you know, that was, that was John's thing and it worked for him. We, we want everyone to experience it. You know, Mm -hmm. we want it to be that I want to go there. I want to go there. And, you know, we don't want reservations to tie that up because, you know, it's a solid hour, hour and a half of, of Mm mealtime. So, um, and we've done a really good job. Our kitchen really has done a good job of getting, getting them through and we're working on it. Um, so awesome. Yeah. So what's that website? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said got it. It was so good, so I didn't want to have my head down the thing. Uh, you know, Google. I, I had, think that's it. Was, it, yeah. was, it was on, yeah. you know, airplane mode. You got to go, folks. You got to go uh, check out the the Monday ride. Yeah. The bar. Yeah. Pali Thai food truck is awesome food. Pali Thai uh, food truck. They're usually set up like 4.30 to 8. Uh, cruiser ride leaves around 6.00. Um, it's been a little hot the last couple of weeks, so it's been a very limited amount of people on, mm-hmm. sadly. Um, but they still come and hang out. Yeah. You know, even if they're like, oh, okay, we'll just hang out. Got the bar open, the pally tie. Like, it's pretty cool. Well, I'll have- say, I'll say my bar. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching and listening to the Full Circle Podcast. We'll see you next month. Thanks for listening. This is Christy Reese signing out from the Full Circle Podcast.